In the beginning of the book, he talks about um, obviously being in the low felt. This is Bullpen now camping there, and, and your yeah. dad walking in on the campfire yeah. and introducing themselves. And yeah, that's yeah. basically how the relationship started. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, it took him there, but I think it is not <coughs> they were there together, yeah. but it is just as an introduction that. Uh, he came to visit old places. Me and my father mm. were there before Bulpen. Okay, right. To, to visit this old place, Makulak store and that. Yes. And we went with an old Hanamak truck uh, up to there and it could only run like 40 miles an hour. Sure. Uh, we went there and then uh, afterwards, so we went there with, when he sort of to recollect old memories, you know. Right, yeah. Did he go back fairly often to well, the my, low my father, your dad? Yeah, yeah. He went there <coughs> with me and with Bullpen and never again. Never again, really? Never again. Sure, that's amazing, yeah. yeah. Um, Isaac, um, just going back in time a little bit, um, your dad's motivation for, for going down there in the first place, I gather he served some time in the, in the police, with the police, is that correct? Yes, and no, but when he was 17 or years yeah, old or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I believe, you know, he felt constrained and tired being there and he just wanted to get back into, into the bush, having come from the Neisner originally yeah. with the stories of elephant hunting and yeah. things. One of the things that comes out very strongly in Bulkpin's book and in the introduction about your dad is his sort of determination as a person, his mm. sense of humor, and, and a very likable kind of nature, I'm mm. led to believe. Mm. Yeah, you, you see, if you take it a little bit further, after the World War, yeah. everything was destructed completely. Yes. This was not his farm. They had a farm between here and Schweizerienica, Kalplas. Yes. But because my old grandfather, they came from uh, the Cape, just before the Boer War, and then he joined the Boer, so they were taken as rebels, yes. so they lost their property. The, uh, old, my old grandmother died here in Setla Gole, Setla Gole, uh, uh, in a concentration camp, and the children, and so on. And uh, they had to live, yeah. try to live. So he went <coughs> there, but he wanted to walk up to Malindi in Kenya where he landed up later on to go to uh, Sangiro, a, a Pinar. He was a cousin, as I understood of my father. Yeah. And my father wanted to join them in Tanyanika. Okay. You see here near the uh, uh, Ngorongoro crater yes, there, yes, yeah. at Arusha. Right. He wanted to join them there. Then he was attacked by this Shangan Portuguese groups yes. on the Saaf River, yes. not here, yes. at, uh, uh, at uh, uh, the Lavubu, yes. but on the Saaf. Yes. And then he said, well, I've, I've think now I'm going to stay here and shoot your elephants till uh, I make up all the money I've lost. That's yeah. what they say. Yeah. I don't know how much truth is in there. Yeah. But later on, he went up to Malindi, which is in Tanzania, mm -hmm. just below Bogamoyo. Okay, yeah. And then he fell out with the Portuguese, you know, they, they had this coasters from uh, port to port to port, and they sat two or three days, and then they load, and then they go and sit a month, and they got the hell in, and they said, oh, okay, bye-bye. And he walked from there back to Crook's Corner. So when did he actually go to Melindi then? It must have been there in the 1920s. So. Really? Yeah. No, not 1920, 1912 there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because he was on his way 
mm. to, to join his family there on the new farms. Right, right. You see, in, yeah. in Kenya, yeah. uh, Elder Red and uh, all that place in mm. Kenya, Tanzania, the settlers there. And then, uh, quite a while later, I suppose, he wanted to go there, so he walked up to Malindi, but he went with the coasters, but he walked back. Walked back. Yeah. And that's a huge distance. That's a huge <laughs> distance. Uh, very, very hard walking. I'm telling you, I've been there, my goodness. Yeah. Not easy. Well, you mentioned his, his fight on, on, the, on the Savi River with the Shangans, yeah. Falage, this police boy from Masangan. And, I mean, the fact that he was able, with nothing, to walk 150 miles back to, to Makaleki yeah. in the condition that he was in shows yeah, but, his uh, but to, to, to Louis Trichard, actually, I think, or Sukmakar. Did he actually walk to Sukmakar? That, yeah, somewhere there. Really? Because where would he get clothes? Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't know if William Pice or... Uh, the, the shop already worked in those early days. Really, they yeah. put up the shop there. Yes, you know? yes. It was quite a nice place. Uh, Borchards, whether they had the store there, mm. but uh, he landed up at Sukmakar. Amazing. Incredible. I mean, it's yeah. just the courage that, that he exhibited there was absolutely yeah, amazing. Yeah, well, you die or you go. Yeah. You know? yeah. But you haven't got much choices. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned William Pye and, and some of the other characters that were at Makaleki, yeah. Alec Thompson, I believe, and, yeah. and there was Buck Buchanan. Buck Buchanan. I met British. Buck Buchanan as well. Really? Did you? Yeah. yeah. Then he was here at Louis Moore gold mine. Is that so? Yeah. He was living there. Yeah. yeah. Amazing to hear that. Yeah. yeah. Many of the exploits that are written about your dad um, in Bullpen's book, Mm -hmm. um, all right, he, he makes a big thing of that, that fight on the Savi and, yeah. and your dad eventually seeking his revenge uh, throughout that whole Portuguese East African area between Makaleki and the and, uh, Great Sava River. Yeah, the Sava River. Um, again, makes fascinating reading. And, and he seemed ultimately to dominate that whole area, really, as far as the Shangans were concerned. Well, he dominated completely. And uh, they say, that he got away with murder even today. You know, if you talk about Vakenia, everyone knows, and you won't believe me, but I'll give you my friend, Hans Farmer, who is a botanist in Warambad. Yes. He's one of the top guys in South Africa. We were in Shai Shai. Yes. Talking to the governor. And with, with us were Gideon Dobe, who was a minister of education in the times of... Uh, the first president. Yes. And as I walked away, I said, we'll finish my walk, and you hear the children quack, 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 shouting and running. And then they say, Isaac, stop, stop, stop. I said, do you hear what they say? I said, no. And this Gideon Dobe say, this children say, there is the Kenya walking. My word. So the way I walk, was the way my father walked and the children that has never seen him, but five generations later, the description was so perfect that they recognized me. That is Kenya. quite amazing. Yeah. And you can, I can give you answers, phone, you can phone him. That's incredible. And yeah. that's at Shai Shai. Yeah, that was at Shai no, Shai. Really, yeah. Now, okay, he has never been near Shai Shai, yeah, right? Yeah. He's been here on the Lampopo and the yeah. uh, Saaf and the Lundi. Lundi, yeah. No, okay, and, and there at Shai Shai, mm. they recognized me as Vakenia. Well, that just confirms the influence that your, your father had in that area. That's amazing. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, and even today, you go there and... Uh, uh, the uh, Portuguese side mm. on the south, mm. they say that uh, that land belongs to Vakenia. They won't give it out for hunting. Really? It's Vakenia's land and they're waiting for him. And the same Hans was there trying to get that concession. And they said, no, it's Vakenia's. 
That's incredible. That really yeah. is amazing. So I can, I, I, when we're finished, I can give you his phone number. Then mm. you talk to him and let him tell you. Ask him about this concession that the, uh, at the SAF yeah. and uh, about me walking there at Chai Chai and the children running after me and say, it's for Kenya. Because that, that was another question I wanted to ask you. Have, have you been sort of into that area below the Savi where your dad operated and hunted? Have no. you ever had that opportunity? No, I've been to Bershanor <coughs> Bridge on the Zimbabwe side. Yes. When we went to Shimani Mani. Yes. And that to go and look at that uh, contour on the mountains yes. where the old uh, Indonesians planted rice. Okay. And we went there, but I've never been in the uh, uh, Mozambique side, although we've been up to Baira yes. and we've been up to Tete and all that. Yeah. But I've never been in that corner. Yeah. Because that would be fascinating to to go into that area and, and again talk to the Shangan people. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, what led me to ask the question, another thing that Bulpen uh, um, concentrated on in the book was your dad's camp on the Shefu River where he had like a permanent camp where after yes. hunting they'd go and make uh, their whips and, and things, uh, yeah. things, you know. Yeah. Now I wonder if that could still be identified as far as the Shangans are concerned. Oh, the Shangans will know exactly if you're in the Shefu area, hmm. you say the Shangans, where is Kenya's camp? Would they be able to show oh, one? Oh, yes. Remember, Shangans my age is still near over Kenya. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. That, that's really amazing. That would be a wonderful thing to be able to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, to yeah, Patricia up. Glynn. You know who's Patricia? I'd she she walked from Durban to Victoria Falls oh, yes, in the footsteps right. of her grandfather. Yes, that's right. Now, yes. She w wanted to let me go with her there. Mm and uh, to get the story together and walk from there on to Sufala, but there are too many landmines. I said, no, it's too dangerous. Yeah, it would be dangerous. Because she walked through the felt. But uh, then there is another character which uh, it's not written about. It is Fred Roo. He was one of the group that was with Bakenia. And they tamed Ireland. Right. And they were milking the Eland, but uh, from Crook's Corner in the uh, Mozambique side. Right. And there he was arrested by the Portuguese and right. taken away to Inamban. And for Kenya and his friends tried to get him away, and try, but they were not successful. Mm. And there was never heard of Fred Drew again. Disappeared, really? Where he died or whatever happened. And we all think that maybe he died, just died there. Oh, really? Yeah. Shame. Yeah. There was another character called Charlie Deagle, I believe. He oh, yes. also disappeared ultimately. He was captured eventually by the Portuguese. Yeah. And I think your dad tried to save him as well. Yeah. But now, if I am correct, um, your dad's brother-in-law, Billy Green, who he, this was his farm. It was his farm, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and yes. then his wife died. His wife died in Boxburg. Oh, did she die in Boxburg? Yes. Okay. All right. And that's when my father bought the farm right. uh, from him. And this old square dam behind the workshop yes. and this conical uh, milling tank were built by them here in the 1920s. Is that so? Yeah. So that's still that that thing's is, still standing. And uh, it looks because uh, uh, this Billy Green's father, mm. uh, as if they were the grandchildren of Frederick Joseph Green, who oh. discovered the Kuneni River. Oh, really? Yeah. And then when their father, their children, you, you know, he had a white wife, and then. He married a Herrera woman there okay. in Namibia. Yeah. And then uh, his children came out and they died at Mikey's Fontaine. Oh, really? And they were buried there. Mm. And uh, uh, one died from blood poisoning, the other one died from malaria. So the, the housemaid took the children back to England. And then 
when they were big, they brought them back, and this is now this uh, Fred Green, uh, that my Billy Green, that Billy my Green. married my father's sister. Okay, all right. Now I wanted to confirm that with you that it was Billy Green's farm originally here, and that yes, no, they then bought it. Definitely, yes, yeah, definitely. Yes. Because also apparently when that Charlie Deagle uh, was Billy Green went down to the low felt and he was with your dad for a bit and he he got sick was it blackwater fever or something yeah yeah and that's when Deagle got hurt and your dad was trying to nurse the two of them but they were like 15 miles uh, apart, apart or something yeah well uh, yeah Billy Green also died from blackwater did fever, he really from malaria yeah oh did he really yeah now you know his daughter. She died two years ago at the age of 97. Really? Yeah. And uh, I've uh, spoke to her and I've visited her. Mm. I've taken her even to the memorial when we unveiled it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Nora. Nora mm. Green. Nora Green, really. Yeah, she was Pullen. Uh, she married a Pullen. Pullen, really. And yeah. her son, Wally, he also went along. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and she told us that. Yeah. Well, it's like, um, as, as far as the, the elephants that your dad ultimately shot, the figure that's given in Bullpen's book, is that a sort of accurate figure over 300 elephants? Yeah, as far well, as you know? I, I, I don't know. Mm. I could believe so. It, it means for the time he was there, it means once, one a month. Yeah. But what, what I understood very well, I think he, he was maybe the first conservationist hunter. Yeah. where he was culling the elephants because he and the Shangans walk on the elephant's tracks and then they look at the dung. Right. And the coarse dung means the elephant hasn't got teeth, although they get six sets of teeth, three, nine, fifteen, so, so, so. And here on uh, 38 they get the last set of teeth. Then they grow out of teeth and they yes. die from hunger. Right. Yes. Here at the age of 50, 52, elephant doesn't get 100 years. Right. Now they walk and they, they look at this dung. Yeah. So this is an old bull or an old cow. Mm. Let's follow her and shoot her. That's, yeah, that's that, is, yeah. that is how he told me. That is what they... And then he never shot an elephant and let it die. And they first called the Shangans in the area because mm. of people died from hunger a lot yeah. there. And then they said, I'm going to hunt this elephant. And they made ready and if they shoot an elephant, they come and they take out the tusk, but the people take all the meat. Yes, so and they there benefit. Is nothing them. left yeah. and they eat that. Yeah. So he never shot an elephant and just leave it to die, yeah. to, to rot there. Mm. Given everyone was hunted, you can say, for the people. That's how I understood it. I may be wrong, mm. but that is how I understood it. Yeah. There was um, something that I pulled off the internet where they, they mentioned the fact that he became a conservationist, or in a sense at heart he was a conservationist. And when he went up into, into Rhodesia, um, and Bulpin makes mention of this um, following uh, sort of rains, and where the, the felt had greened up yeah. and there were vast herds of animal around. And he wrote to Forrestold, who was the yeah. district commissioner at Chibi. That's right. And, and he then mentioned the, perhaps the need for a game reserve That's right. and linking a Rhodesian game reserve with a South African game yeah, reserve. Yeah, almost 100 years earlier than what it is done. Eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was very interesting for me because, again, People like to concentrate on the so-called poaching side of, of, of yeah, your dad's life. Yeah, yeah. But I think for me what was very, very significant is, is that and also, and again it's beautifully written and again how accurate it is I don't know, but your dad's following of, of Lulamiti, yeah, the well, elephant. Yeah, uh, well, that, that is uh, how we've got it now, I don't think, you know, we didn't talk too much because yeah. there was such an age difference. Yes, yes. But. Uh, when he talked, uh, we we usually listen, and he said, you know, you do this and you do that and that mm. and that. Mm. So, because and I said, Pa, I suppose you have shot hundreds of lions. He said, no, I shot five lions in my life. Really? So, why must I kill them for what? Yeah. yeah. You see? Yes. And uh, that makes you think that uh, all the big hunters here say, Oh, my dad has shot 
20 lines here in the Botswana. And I thought, no, I shot five lines in my whole life. Yeah. Because why do you kill them? For what? Yeah, if there's no need. Yeah. 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 So uh, that makes you think that he was a conservationist yes. as well. Yes. Although that's why I say he never hunted young elephants. He looked at the dung to see whether they're old. Yeah. That's the ones that they bring down. Well, that's very interesting to hear, and I'm very glad you've mentioned that. Yeah. That's something I'd really like to highlight. Um, yeah. You know, in the article yeah. on your day. Yeah. No, very but that that is it. really. I mean, we talked about that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When he eventually decided to to move here permanently from the low felt, yeah, um, I was given to understand that he a lot of the um, he he brought a lot of uh, hardwood up from there for yes, furniture. Yes. Does that furniture still there? Really? Yeah. And the, he made that. They made it here on the farm under some of the chairs. There is the uh, date. 1928 and 1932 oh, and uh, Piet van Seyl and uh, another man here and my father. Their names are under some of these chairs. Isn't that and that amazing. is mahogany. Yeah, mahogany. Trachelia right. emetica. Yes, yes. And Umisaki brought it all up on wagon? On a donkey wagon. We had no oxen there because they died from uh, black or uh, red water, hard water and yeah. Uh, but sets of flies and things. Yeah. Uh, only donkeys. How long did it take him to trek from? Three months. From there to here. It took three, three months. months. Yeah. Incredible. Amazing. Yeah. And you wonder how many trips he made backwards and forwards. No, but uh, only he went there for seven years, and then he came back, and then he went back for like thirteen years. No, oh, really. And that he never, I don't, I, as I understood, he never came back uh, every time because yeah. remember the police was looking for him. They yeah. all wanted him in jail. Yeah. So I don't think he would be such a fool to travel past yeah. Johannesburg and Pretoria with all the police chasing you. Yeah, yeah. And when he um, started um, working for the mines for, for labor recruiting. Yeah. Again, it's my understanding that, that he went to the police commissioner in Joburg and, and told him what he wanted to do and, and they cleared his name because they hadn't anything that they could really show. You know. Well, except in, in Rhodesia, he was fined five pounds for poaching a hippo. Hippo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what a forestal or whatever. Uh, we've still got the paper somewhere here. Really? Yeah. 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 Uh, that, uh, also a photo of this huge elephant. Really? Yeah. 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 Just clarify something for me. Was blackbirding, as it was called, was it considered illegal unless you were employed by the mines to do it? Yeah, you know, uh, I don't know how it worked, but uh, my father was very much against, in the beginning, against the way the mines worked. Mm. Because they put them on Thornycroft trucks, from Pafuri, yeah. and then they drove them here from the low felt naked people in the cold in Johannesburg, yeah. in the mines after a few months and they all died from uh, pneumonia and things like that. Yes. My father said, no, you must walk them that they get acclimatized. The Slowly and he had his wagon uh, and with a Millimill, millis on it and a little hand mill. Really? We only even had it when we were young on this farm. Yes. Same yeah. one. And they grind the millis and so he walked them. And uh, uh, and of course he could speak the Shangon uh, language very well and uh, uh, that type of thing. But I think mm. it took them up to Sukmakar. Oh, uh, really? Not yeah. to Johannesburg. Not to Johannesburg, really. Yeah. 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 Because his period with the mines lasted a certain period of time and I understand yeah, eventually got long. fed up and not, not went long. back to hunting again. Yeah, uh, not long and I don't know why or what reason, but I suppose he made a little bit more money uh, with, the, with the hunting and the mm. hippo whips and the yeah. uh, giraffe 
uh, whips a long neck down, you know, and, uh, yes. uh, for the driving 16 oxen and that type of thing. Mm. Uh, that is why, uh, I don't know, but you know, if a man was like him, he was the law himself. So mm. you don't go under a smaller law than you, yes, you know, of and then yeah. obey them. And so I don't think he could make it possible to work yeah. for, for yeah. them. He was Although he was in, uh, in, in Pafuri. Yeah. The buildings are still standing there. Are they? Yes, no. They're still living people living in there. I used to go and sleep there, even now. Really? Huh? Beautiful buildings. And then there are the... Uh, what, what is the, uh, the man who was there after, uh, after my father? He died a few years ago from cancer, he and his wife, and the books that they kept, mm. every day written in all the names, uh, Harold Mo uh, Mockford okay. from Petersburg. They just had the house out of Petersburg, mm. which Sandy Collins bought, a girl that worked for us, mm. she bought that place, but that was their farm, but he was it at Pafuri. Now it's still running today. And well, the inspection pits of the old uh, Thornycroft trucks and all that's still there. Still there, really. Is and that on the Mozambique side, if you go through, mm. the Mozambique side, they had this most beautiful uh, manager houses, like three on the cliff overlooking the river, and then in the back, the dormitories and like, 16-seater toilets and uh, showers and all that. And when the Frelimo came, they shot all that things. You can't believe it, how they mm. shot it down. But it is still there, the frames. And it's one or two houses, not too much damage. But you can't believe You feel like crying if you see. Yeah, such wanton but, destruction. But that, yeah. Yeah. Well, your dad's camp at, at um, sort of Makaleki, was it where the Pongola and the Lavuva rivers meet? Was it was no, it there? No, no. The Limpopo mm. and the Lavubu. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you are in, come from the Crooks, Crooks corner, ach, from uh, Puna Maria. Yes. You drove up against the river. Yes. Where the bridge go over. Yes. Now, if you go down the river to where the river, that is now in the Kruger side. You're right into the sea, that is uh, into the Lampopa, that is the, the, the river, and that is Crook's Corner. Yes. And now if you stand there like this, the junction, yes. you look into Crook's Corner where they camped under this huge wild fig trees. All right. But Crook's Corner, if the river comes in flood, that is 20 feet under water, 10, 20 feet. Right. So you go over the river and you go like uh, three, four miles, and then you turn right. That corner is called Crook's Corner, and not only that little bit. Yes, right. That's where the memorial is, is still in Crook's Corner. Okay. But we put it there, Tol Pinar asked us to put it there, he said, because it will wash away. Right. And with this big flood, mm. the water was just next to it. Yeah, I can believe it. Yeah. Huh? And where was the original beacon that they... they on the about? island. Was it on the island So there's, there is this a river and it makes a deviation round an island. Yes. And that's where the beacon was, is yeah. on the island and not on the mainland. On the mainland, really. Because yeah. the border of always the middle of the river, mm. Mm. from the middle of this river to that. Yes. And that's where the beacon was. Oh, I see. On that side. Does that beacon still exist there? Uh, well, uh, some years ago it still existed, like 15 years ago, but then the top post was rusted off, mm. but the cement block and so much of the pipe still stood there. Really? My old friend who passed away, Kasper, he's been there. Really? Has he actually seen it? Yeah, he, lived from, he lives in the Machubas Club. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Sure. Your dad eventually married, your mother was Maria Badenhorst, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Was her family farming in this area, um, Isaac? They, they farmed, yeah, near, uh, near Wolmerastad, hmm. Makwasi. 
No, Makwasi, right. Makwasi. Yeah. Okay. And how they came here is that the, a war broke out because, be, between Monshiwa, he's the captain or the king here at Kunana, not far from us, yeah. and Monshiwa, Mushete. Mushete here and Monshiwa in Nefa King. Mm. And they, here of Mushete, sent his people to Ram to call the Boers to help them against that one. Yeah. And then he would give a farm to the farmers to come and help them. And all these farms were given by old Mushete to the Boers who came to help them. That's why when they had all this land claims, mm. they put it back because uh, the blacks still remember the really? history of it. Oh, really? Because yeah. this farm is now over a hundred years in our family. Family, yes, yes. But it, uh, the uh, original owner of this was a Harris, right. but he died. Mm -hmm. An old Englishman, he died there, and then it belonged, it uh, came to the Greens, and then to my father, mm -hmm. and then I bought it in my father's will. All right, okay. And I just wanted to also ask you, you, you had three brothers and a sister, is that correct? Yeah. And, and are they still alive or not? One brother is still alive, the one that is older than me. Yes. The oldest one died from malaria, and he is buried here on the farm. He picked it up in the Aswan Dam, and then uh, when the French kicked, the, the Egyptians kicked them out there away, building the Aswan, then he and the governor of New Zealand, Sir Herbert Penny's son, walked from Dar es Salaam straight over the Rift Valley following the Congo to the west coast of Africa in two years. Oh, and then he got malaria and he died in Pretoria, but he picked it up in Sanin. Really? And then my youngest brother also passed away a few years ago when I was in uh, Angola, I didn't know. When I came back, I heard that he's buried already for three weeks or what. Really? You know, and then my sister, the youngest one, she also passed away. So it's me, me and the one that is older than I am. That's left now. Yeah. Really? Goodness me. Huh? Sure. Uh, remember, but it was given by Sonny Roll to me. Yes. Is that right? Yes, I think it's. It is Sonny. Sonny Raw. Sonny Raw, yes. And, and who was his father? His stepfather? Uh, let me read it. The ivory was given to Sonny Raw of the farm Durungboom mm. in the Salzmannberg district yeah. by Bikenia and about, and I can't read that date. It was a token of Bikenia's uh, appreciation of the frequent hospitality received at Durungboom en route to his hunting grounds at Pafuri. Later, the Ari was given by Sonny to his stepson, Ernest Watson, oh, who subsequently Watson, gave yes. it to Bikenia's yes. son, Isaac Sonny Bonner. Yeah. Uh, was the owner of the shop at near Sukmakar. He had a little mill, yes. and he milled uh, grain for the people. Yes, yes. And then that was uh, given to them because my father, they come from Le Strichard, he stayed over there on his way up. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a lovely thing to have. Yeah, yeah. Just finally, just your, your dad's physical appearance. I'm just curious. Yeah. Was, was he a, how tall was he? Was he a tall man? Or no, he was, tall, my, my, uh, my length, he was five foot ten and a half. Five really? Foot ten, yeah. Like me, I'm, I was five foot eleven. Yes. And it was me, strong. Strong, yeah. Very strong. Yeah. Yeah. There's a very nice photograph of him in, in the Ivory Trail in Borkin's yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, and, uh, when he was 50, say 50, he, he still had a body like I have, a little bit of a boupens, you know. Mm. Uh, but uh, that's it, he's not fat and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. He's still like that. A very physical kind of person, yes, I would imagine. Yes, yeah. yes. Is his um, grave nearby? Is it possible yes. for us to have a look at it? I'd Very really like to. I'll, I'll send someone because I can't walk just here. Yes, yes. Yeah. If you don't mind, I'd really like to. Yeah, no, uh, you see. can really uh, go and look and I've 
put the map that is in the ivory trail, it's on his... Oh, really, is it? His, oh, yeah. That would be wonderful. Oh, yeah. 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 No, but uh, you know, uh, I am to say, now, my grandfather, he took the Prince of Wales out to hunt elephants. Really? My other brother still has got the table that Prince of Wales, it folds up like this and hinges and this little blow. And then my father, then me, now it is my son. Mm. And uh, uh, we're all in this uh, game. But I've never killed anything. Really? Never. So you're not really a hunter yourself? No. Mm. Mm. No, I like to see things alive. Yes, yes. Mm. Yeah.